Records. It's nutritionist and maintainable weight loss coach, Trisha Manis, also the author of the book, The Optimal Eating Solution, Maintainable Weight Loss and Longevity, even if you can't exercise. So right now, I am talking about why I have never recommended protein to any of my clients. I know this video is about two days late, so thank you for bearing with me. I really appreciate that, but I'm very excited to share this information with you. So I know there's people in the group talking about having a protein shake in the morning. So here's what I want you to know. Remember, if you are not a client, I don't know you or your unique situation, but what I am talking about is the wonderful women and men that I have worked with. Hi, Dorothy, so good to see you. That I have not yet recommended this to anyone, and there's three reasons why. Number one, for my clients, a lack of protein was never an issue. And generally speaking, for Americans, it's not. I'll dive deeper into more of that in a bit. But my clients weren't coming to me because they had a lack of protein issue. They had weight loss and chronic disease issues and a very challenging time being able to exercise. So it's a common myth that Americans aren't getting enough protein. As long as you're eating enough calories, which again, Americans are eating more than enough calories, then you are not going to risk not getting enough protein unless maybe all you're eating is white rice for a year or two years in a row, right? But our diets in the United States are diverse enough that that's not an issue. So a lack of protein is a total non-issue. Which brings me to point number two. How much protein do you actually need and how much are you actually getting? Now, I don't know that about you watching this camera, but about Americans generally speaking, the Institute of Medicine recommends that to get in the very least an adequate safe amount of protein, meaning it's more than enough, only 10% of our calories need to come from protein. And according to the CDC, from 2013 to 2016, every single sex and age group in America is getting at least 15% of their calories from protein. So most likely, protein is a non-issue for you. Again, this is a generalization about Americans. Point number three, the source of protein in your shake could be helpful, worthless, or harmful. So if you do use it, I don't. I don't use protein powders, shake powders at all. But if you do, I would generally recommend using a whole food plant-based protein where all they do is grind up whole plant foods and it's in a powder form or they dehydrate them, grind them up, it's in a powder form. So you're getting it that way. If you want to lose weight, again, it's gonna depend. If I have a client who comes to me and is eating this stuff, they have to send the nutrition label to me for me to read it until they have developed those skills themselves to make sure that not only this is potentially helpful, for chronic disease prevention and, and weight loss. But a lot of times, the plant foods that they use are very calorie dense, which means they're more likely to help promote weight gain or slow weight loss. So we wanna make sure that not only are you eating optimally as healthy as possible, but you're not eating a very condensed source of calories that don't fill you up. So if you are gonna eat it, I recommend it's whole food plant-based. It could be totally worthless. You could just be losing your money, having a protein supplement shake, or at worst, it could be harmful, especially depending upon the type of protein that it is. So that's really important, especially if it's animal-based, casein, or isolated um, soy protein, depending upon the source of that, if it's, um, if it's, made in a lab or if it's actually taken from food, it depends. But I highly recommend Googling this blog that I wrote years ago called Why Focusing on Protein for Dropping Pounds is a Waste of Time at Best and Deadly at Worst. So make sure you Google that or just Google Trisha Mandis Protein. You're also going to get another blog that I wrote which I recommend which is called Why You Don't Need 
animal food for protein. I definitely recommend checking that out. But this is generally the reasons why I do not recommend protein shakes to my clients. There's other reasons that I don't recommend smoothies for most of my clients as their number one energy source. And I'm gonna explain in another video this week why I don't recommend smoothies as the number one energy boosting breakfast. Now, again, when I work with my clients, it's highly individualized. So it's gonna depend on if there's a better option that you can actually do and implement. A smoothie might be the best one, but it's not the very best, okay? There's a different place you wanna to get to. It doesn't mean smoothies are bad, generally speaking. It's always gonna depend on what you put in them and what the rest of your day is like when you eat. So this is why I don't recommend protein shakes and I never have, as of now, for my clients. Protein generally is not an issue. Now I'd like to hear from you. Comment below what's one thing you learned from this video or if you thought you had to have protein in your shake, where is that coming from? Tell me what you've learned. Put it in the comments below and if you want me to answer any questions, I'm happy to do that. So thank you so much for watching. Get educated, get support, and take control because you can get the healthy, lean, strong body you deserve.